I'm Juliana Hawk. And I'm John Towers. John's back, everybody. <laughs> Woo! You're three Pete. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's right. Ooh. This is my third time. <laughs> you get so fucking formal whenever you come on. Because <laughs> I was listening back to the, your last episode you were on just like to refresh my memory and someone asked you the same fucking questions. And I was like, wow, John is super formal in his introduction. <laughs> So, well, I gotta loosen up. Usually, I have a gigantic, you know, thing of booze in front of me. I mean, know. we can get you booze. Nah, I mean, we right. have booze. <clears throat> we have, I mean, we have <clears throat> coffee mead if you want coffee mead. No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I was just making excuses for myself. You know? <laughs> I feel like just the fact that I've been like falling asleep to Parks and Rec on a loop lately, every time they describe snake juice, <laughs> I think of. <laughs> Like, you should know. There's so much alcohol in it, but there's enough caffeine to keep you going. Like, hey, my, we have that. I don't. I don't. I don't typically comment on things, so you know my opinion is worth something. You watch Parks and Rec, John? No, okay. Well. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it is. It's a fun show. You, if you ever feel the need to watch it, uh, skip the first season. Okay. It's like six episodes, and the characterizations are complete. All you need to know is there's a pit. That's where Star Lord comes from, right? Yeah, yes. for Chris Pratt. <laughs> All you need to know is there's a pit, and Rashida Jones and Star Lord were dating in the first season, okay. and that's pretty much it. After that, you're fine. <laughs> All right, I got it. I got it. So John's coming because because uh, you are insane and you constantly are writing. So you have a new book coming. <laughs> out. Yeah, this one took me two years, guys. Wow. Yeah, that's how long it's been. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's crazy. So what uh, you want to tell us about the book? Because I, I I always like hearing the backstories on your books. Yeah, so. it's um, it started. It's kind of like I've been doing these like occult kind of books and stuff for so long. I have like this huge like clearinghouse of ideas that I've never been able to like smash into a story before. So I kind of like took a bunch of them and kind of like did like a history of the world kind of thing. So the book it's called The Ages and it, it starts out like in a Cain and Abel days and kind of like recasts like as Cain as the good guy. Okay. And like he, like a uh, God as like a tyrant instead of, well, he's kind of like a tyrant anyway. Like anyways. Let <laughs> me go with Gnostics. They, yeah, right. evil God, good God. <clears throat> so, um, so I did like, I was able to fit a lot of Gnostic stuff in there. Um, and, uh, I was able to fit like, um, Saturn, as like a, an avatar for God, like I don't know if you guys have ever seen the the South Pole of Saturn. Mm -mm. It's crazy. It has like a geometrical hexagon, like at the bottom of it, mm. and it looks like this eye just like fucking like staring down. <laughs> and so I'm a fan of when I was in my formative years. I read this book from, <laughs> from so formal <laughs> from this uh, this guy named Emmanuel Vilikovsky. Do you guys know who he is? The name sounds familiar. He wrote this book. He wrote like four or five or six fucking books or whatever. Uh, but the one that I read uh, was called Worlds in Collision. And he has this idea about back, like in prehistory, how the sky that we looked at was like a totally alien sky. Like the planets were all rearranged. Mm -hmm. And um, he posits that like Venus was part of a comet that like collided into Mars, fucking Mars all up. And it like... Basically, it was like a billiard table. <laughs> it like spread out like the the planets, and the, these things are kind of represented in some of the myths and mm. stuff from like ancient times. So, like, I took that and um, I got real like bent up into that ancient, like the ancient sky theory. There's another guy um, uh, who he posits this thing called the electric universe where it's like gravity is not really the coolest power in the universe. It's actually like this electricity that's between everything. 
And he says that there used to be, um, everything was like supercharged. So there would be like gigantic plasma arcs going from like different heavenly bodies to other different heavenly bodies. And he looks at like Mars and like the scorching and cracking on Mars. <clears throat> and he says that it's caused like he gets like a piece of iron and he like spot welds it. And he's like, see, look at this shit. It looks exactly the fucking same as this thing on Mars does. And so like I, I'm collecting these ideas and like I'm figuring out a way to, to use them and like Saturn being like geom like orbitally you know stationary above like the Garden of Eden just staring down at you like with this fucking like eye mm-hmm. uh, being like the avatar of God <clears throat> um, and like working in like these Vilikovsky kind of kind of things and plus like you know everyone's favorite you know stories about like the Nephilim and like the biblical giants and all the stuff I had to pack all that all that stuff in like in there Mm -hmm. and then i got to like make it a little bit more contemporary and um take him like into like the like the crusades and you know like his whole thing about like rebel like the whole thing is like kane's being a rebel like he's rebelling against this tyrant or that tyrant and like the whole world basically could be lived in the dungeon of like these castles like up until you know like a certain historical point you know like the point where like the american revolution you know it was revolutionary because it put the power to the people instead of to the government Mm -hmm. so the idea is like he's running and running trying to get out from under this tyranny and he winds up coming and like influencing like the uh the founding of the country like this like Like america and stuff yeah okay you know he gets uh cursed to walk the earth and so like the idea is is like He's cursed to walk the earth, and in the Crusades, he gets stabbed, and he's like, yeah, finally, I get to fucking die. (laughs) And instead, he just sits in this cave and rots, and he just turns into, like, basically, he's just like a walking skeleton for, like, the rest of the book, which is really great, because I love, like, Ray Harryhausen, like, the old Ray Harryhausen's and stuff, like, uh, uh, Sinbad. Uh, yeah, Jason he's like, the Argonauts. Yeah, like fighting those little skeletons. Like I just had, like <laughs> that's what it looks like in my brain. Like he's all stop motion animated. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought of, I, I, I thought of the comedian Sinbad fighting skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds yeah, about right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. So uh, basically, like I said, it's just a way for me to like shuffle in all these fun like crazy weird you know Saturn death cult ideas and stuff and you know make this cool narrative it's like it's you know it's like there's like a love story built in there and like I, I could talk for hours about like narcissism and stuff like that so I got to like pack all that stuff and usually I hide that kind of stuff in my stories but mm-hmm. sent, I was able to like go like back and do it kind of like op- you know like being out in the, being out in the open where you know there's a part where he's just like He's, I don't know, I can't remember, he's not talking to God, he's talking to someone else, but he's like, he fucks everything up. Like, he fucks everything <laughs> up. Like, he's not good at anything. <laughs> so, like, I was able to, like, just, you know, weave that in, where usually, like, uh, I keep it I keep it back a little bit. <laughs> Gee, I wonder. <laughs> no, it's just, like, that's intense, that's, all, that's awesome. Like, I, I also like the allegory of the, um... Not the allegory, the example that you made of uh, History of the World. Because I was hoping you met Mel Brooks' History of the World, <laughs> but like I wasn't I, I, sure. I was going to I was gonna add part one, then I was like, you know what? That's not even that good of a joke to interrupt what he's saying. Hitler on ice. Yeah. yeah. But no, like, <laughs> just like, it, it, what I was kind of getting at is like last time you were on, you were talking about whenever you were a kid and you adapted Moby Dick. It's right. like that exact same thing yeah. where it's like, you don't think small, John. <laughs> <laughs> Like at all, I'm like, no, that sounds like. Was this for like a book report? <laughs> or just like, because you were bored, is like, your mom was like, go to your room. Yeah. Or well, like... I stayed there for two years. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know Danny DeVito got really mad whenever his daughter was reading Moby Dick. Matilda, never mind. Oh, okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 gonna be that kind of night. Just forewarning you. Uh, Justin's the, the, the one who's no, sorry. The most like, thing. No, I just did that for fun. It wasn't even really. I was five, so it wasn't even really the book. I was just drawing the Gregory Peck yeah. movie that was on TV. It was on like HBO. Like, okay. 
all the time. Were you drawing it within like a narrative? Yeah, like you can look through it and you can like see like, oh, there's the whale and there's the boat. And the boat. He discussed this on the last episode. Yeah. Yes, That's I just said, it. like you said, on the last episode, whenever you adapted Moby yeah. Dick. Yeah. <laughs> well, another, another cool thing I was able to do since I kind of retroactively told the story of the Gar- Garden of Eden mm-hmm. is I was able to like definitively like identify the fruit. Like that's oh, a big yeah. bone of contention. Yeah, because they're like apple, pomegranate. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I made it wine. Oh, you okay. Know, booze is kind of my thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is like my thing. I made it a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> that is the true temptation, yeah. How did how did the wine work without if if you don't want to tell me, I'm just curious now. Like how did you work the wine in? Well, um when like the the character who is like the serpent mm-hmm. is like talking to cuz <clears throat> when you say like Gnosticism, that's just like saying like Christianity. Like there's tons of different mm-hmm. like Protestant, Catholic, yada yada, Baptist. You know, there's like a ton of different like thought ideas for it. But so I'll say some in some cases in Gnosticism, um, the twins or like Cain and, and Abel. Like Abel was Adam's son, and Cain is the serpent's son. Mm. So, in my story, like, Cain, like, goes to the garden, like, to find the serpent, to be like, yo, what's going on? And he gets, like, a little history lesson, and he goes, oh, like, by the way, would you want some wine? I gave this to your mom, you know, a few years ago. <laughs> she, she totally dug it. Yeah. And so, like... <clears throat> and that's um, why I'm your dad. Well, one of the, uh, one of my favorite parts of the book is when he's leaving the, the garden, you know, he's, like, he stops to take a leak on the, the wall mm-hmm. of the Garden of Eden, so he's, like, you know peeing and god comes down and he's like where's your brother and he's like shaking his fist at him and there's like piss still on his hand and he's like shaking his fist at god like yelling at him and i just like me coming from like being a bouncer like i've had this conversation with 100 people you know? <laughs> so many times i still love germany's response to that uh in, in germany they started like painting buildings like in like around bars with like hydrophobic paint so it would splash back oh nice well when i lived in germany it's like they had they had like this plant like next to all the buildings Mm -hmm. and it was for people to to peel like this weed is a certain kind of weed that like propagates like with urine or something (laughs) that's the story it was everywhere all i know (laughs) is this shit was everywhere (laughs) the germans really turned it around (laughs) they really did Plans for outside peeing. Yeah. That is amazing. Well, it is crazy because you go, like, when you walk the streets of, like, Munich um, or Mannheim, they have, like, porta potties, but it's just got a fucking hole right to the sewer. And you just walk in and just psh, drop peeing it right outside in there. is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like. Okay. I, uh, that's pretty awesome. So I you, guess I'll have to take your word for it. So you were saying you so you got all of the, <laughs> all of this like this was all coming from like all your other books like it was just kind of like the B side yeah, information. It was just like research that I like tucked away and was like I really need to find a place to put this you know mm-hmm. or like I need to like I have in in my books I have like the these evil like malicious wizards they're called the order of the shiny hexagon <laughs> so i'm like well when you know like i'm using the hexagon on saturn mm-hmm. you know like so i'm like able to like link all that stuff together and then like oh well here's how these guys were formed or what are like how they like congealed into a group or something and i was able to use like weird stuff from the tower of babel and like r- really it's just like a big broad stroke of like all the weird shit like in the old testament i was able mm-hmm. to like cr- like cram in there so is it coming out as one big thing or are you doing it in issues no it's all one one big thing it's available on amazon right now oh there you go <laughs> plug <laughs> is there gonna be hard copies or are you just staying with amazon for the moment they're just no it's a, it's a hard copy you get a paper oh out of it. i actually forgot to grab it on my way out uh, tonight. i was gonna bring one but, um yeah because anytime i hear amazon i just automatically think people are doing digital downloads at this point so there yeah. you go that works well it's available in both so i got okay. a new uh, i got a new publisher so it's like the dimensions are slightly different from the other one but yeah it's available on uh, kindle and 
uh, the it's like the trade paperback sort yeah. of feel like it's like a like that. Yeah. That's a very you comment where you're like <laughs> it's slightly different than the other bad book. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's just off by like this much, and I can't fucking figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's All awesome. Right. Um, did so? Did you? How, how did like? Did you pitch like, it? To I them? used the same template. I uh-huh. have no idea. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Uh, no, it was a conscious effort to to go Move. to a, a different publisher. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was uh, the last publisher was the one that moved the date up on you, like motherfucker, right? Yeah. Well, I was going through. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this. If I did, you could just. Shut me now, but uh-huh. um, I was going through. He probably uh, won't. He he usually doesn't. <laughs> I was going just to you. I was going through a, um, a thing where a role playing game company stole a bunch of my artwork. Mm-hmm. The Outlaw Press. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the publisher I was using kind of rushed stuff along. I think because he was doing a little bit of ambulance chasing, you know, a, a publishing move, and like I didn't get to. Um, I didn't get to see the proof and stuff before he ran it, which is like ultimately like the biggest problem because uh, I had a little bit of problems with some of the artwork that was inside. Mm-hmm. Not my artwork, just the way it was, uh, like the way it was printed. That seems weird for like an independent publisher that you would not be able to see. The well, proof. the idea was that I was, and then he like reached out to me and he was like, "Hey, I think there might be some problems with the artwork." And then that thing on the um, Nerdist yeah. dropped, and he was like, "Oh no, I'm running to press. It looks fine." And I was just like, "You." And then I was like, okay, well, I trust the guy. He knows what he's doing. And then when I got my copies, I was like a little on the disappointed side. So, yeah, I made a conscious effort to, you know, um, move to this new company. It's called Burning Ball Press. Uh, they got actually a lot of my friends are, are published with them too, which is kind of how we all sort of like met and congealed anyway. So it was a, it's a perfect fit for me right now. What is it like pu- uh, pitching to a publisher? Well, <clears throat> this publisher it was way different than the last publisher um because it was already done Mm -hmm. when i decided like i'm like i don't want to self-publish this thing and i don't want to go back so i just emailed it to them and i was like hey you know because they know me like i had a professional relationship with them anyways i did some artwork for them in the past Mm -hmm. and they know like my my best friends dave fairhead and uh, nelson w piles and dan they all published through there Mm -hmm. so um you know, I basically just sent them the finished product, and I'm like, uh, what do you think about this? And, you know, he called me, and we hashed out some details or whatever, and then I had a contract. So, that was easy. It's not always easy like that, though. Like, a lot of times, there's a lot of shucking and jiving, you know? And then uh-huh. you never really know, like, the interest level, or, like, how much smoke they're trying to throw your way. Uh-huh. So, it's different with everybody, I guess. I mean, the real way that you gotta do it is, like, put together synopsises and query letters and all that shit just makes you want to blow your fucking head off. The thing that they don't actually teach you. Yeah. But in school. Yeah. It's like <laughs> for a few years, like every year I go out and get like the $50 like writers. Like it's every year they put out like a, not a manual. It's called the writer's market book or something. Mm-hmm. And it has like every agent, every publisher, what they're looking for. Everyone's got different requirements. And literally it's like, I'm going to hit myself in the face with a hammer because, <laughs> you know it's like creating something like that is difficult enough but it's not even the most difficult part the most difficult part is trying to like wrap it up so these fucking gatekeeping dick faces like <laughs> can read it and be like oh i see what he's doing here you know oh, this is a very clever piece of writing and it, you know they don't understand any of it like they mm-hmm. don't get you know they don't get any of it at all is that so easier than self-publishing well see that's the hook man because self-publishing is super easy nowadays, but the thing is, is like you don't have someone there going like, "Hey, whoa, yeah, you know this uh, this isn't your best work." You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like you or like, God forbid, a loved one. Like I don't make my <laughs> wife sit there and fucking read all my shit, but if she did, she'd just be like, "Yeah, yeah, this is great, man. Run with it." You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I kind of find that you need uh, people that are like not afraid to like be like, "Yo, bro." You know, this doesn't make sense or mm-hmm. this. And that's where the uh, the importance of beta readers you yeah. know, come in. Because it's like, not all of them know how to, like, cr- critique stuff. A lot yeah. of them are very rough. But, you know, you just can't take it personally. You're like, this person's giving their time to make sure that your project is as good as it's going to be. You know, so you just got to kind of respect them or whatever. Ooh. I thought that was off. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> No, um, yeah, no, because, yeah, with the beta reader, you were saying, like, one of the things I've run into problems with is um, 
with beta readers is like formatting. Right. Like, because with the script format, we had the, it was one of those things like whenever I gave people Death of the Party, they were like, it's getting confusing right there. And then I had people who are familiar with the screenplay format, like, no, it's fine. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and it, it did, it ended up being just like they weren't familiar with the format because when we did the, the, uh, cast table read everyone's like oh no it makes sense i'm like good yeah. it was one of those things that you're just like well you walk uh, it, you kind of walk a dangerous line when you're accepting feedback like that yeah because you also have to give yourself license to be like this person doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about this is gold <laughs> yeah you know what i mean you just don't want to overuse that card i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 jim gaffigan talks about that because he writes all of his stand-up with his wife and like there are certain things where she's like, "That's not good." He's like, "Well, you're not the one on stage." Right. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's ultimately what I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, so you, was this just something you did in your spare time, like while you were working on like Jin uh, Jihad and everything? Was it just like ages? Was just like on one because you were talking about you always have shit on the back burners. Was ages one of those things? Yeah, it was like. Mm. No, like the projects on the back burner for the Jihad book was, um, I did two complimentary comic book mm -hmm. size comics that came out generally at the same time. Those were like my back burner projects. Okay. Like I have two comic book size comic books that are being released. One is going to be this month and one is going to be next month. And they're kind of supporting books to the ages. And one of them is like my guy, Cyrus, the dead guy, the walking skeleton dude in uh, World War Two. And he and um, he's fighting like gremlins ah. and wiz Nazi wizard, a Nazi wizard, which is a funny uh, to me idea. Like, because it's like one of those ones that are like kind of grounded in reality. Yeah, because wasn't the stuff that there were did. some Nazis that called themselves wizards yeah. and like thought they were wizards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other one is uh, this. Uh, it's kind of like a true story. I just embedded a bunch of like st elements from my comic books. It's. Uh, uh, the Battle of Vienna in 1683. Um, That's the one that like warped the ground, right? That like it was the bombardment was so bad that like the landscape was. Well, what had happened? Um, the Ottoman Empire was moving in and they wanted to take it. They tried to take it a year, a uh, hundred years before that, and Vienna like repelled them and they they put these giant walls around the whole city. So the Ottomans were coming back in. And uh, they were, like, sieging for 28 days. This is actually the story of the first 9-11, because mm -hmm. the, the battle ended on 9-11, ah. 1683. And, uh, oh, that was way off. <laughs> <laughs> these, um, these Ottomans were sieging for a bunch of days, and they were, like, sending emissaries up, and they were talking to this guy. <laughs> He's a, he seems like kind of like a Lando Calrissian kind of guy to me. His name <laughs> is uh, Count Ernest von Stromberg. And, like, you look a picture of this guy, and he's got, like, this little dainty, like, a mustache, and he's got, like, a buttress with, like, his guns and stuff all hanging off it. You're just like, this guy's a badass, but he looks funny. So, <laughs> so they're telling him, like, dude, just give up your city. You don't even have to convert. We'll let all you live. We'll just tax you, and, like, we'll, the city will be ours. And he's like, no, like... Uh, there's people all within the walls, like, dying. They all have these diseases. They can't get out. They can't get any food or water in. And um, uh, they just keep, like, sieging the city or whatever. And this guy's, like, steadfast, hard dick. Like, no, like, get off my <laughs> lawn. And um, eventually, <clears throat> after, you know, these uh, 28 days or whatever it was, uh, King Jan Sobieski III, who was the king of Poland at the time, he ran over you know to vienna and he found this like spot on the high eastern end where their defenses were light and he lined up he had these fucking guys called the flying hussars who are like these horsemen and they have like this armor that's like crazy looking and part of their armor are these like big fake wings that stick up hmm. and he lines he lines all these hussars up on the thing and uh, he charges is the biggest cavalry charge in the history of the world. Still is. Like, Waterloo has nothing on, on this cat. Neither one of the charges that Waterloo does. And these guys rode through. They uh, uh, broke the Ottoman defensive line. And they had to actually divide their forces, which is always bad. You know, whenever you watch, like, the History Channel, yeah. they're like, Commander so-and-so had to divide his forces. That guy's fucked. <laughs> Same thing happened with his dude. <laughs> so, um, they... Uh, they Broke the lines, they beat the Ottomans off, and, um, they didn't beat the Ottomans <laughs> off. 
and I missed it until you corrected yourself. Exactly, I did too. You could have been, it would have been I one of those things. Didn't. It was one of those things I listened back. And I'm like, ah, look at that. Oh, yeah, look and I would have been, I would have probably texted Justin and be like, how'd you miss that? Yeah. I was actually waiting for Justin to say something. So. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, no, it's all good. It's all good. Beat the Ottomans back. Yeah. So, um, so they beat the Ottomans off. We can just call it what it is now. I just uh, keep thinking of my Shut Ottoman, up, like in my living room now. Like, oh, that little guy needs some attention. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, anyhow, this is the battle that began the breaking of the Ottoman Empire. It mm-hmm. never, ever uh, got itself, got its shit back together after this. And the poor son of a bitch who was in charge of them, Kaba Mustafa Pashish, something like this, he had to go back to the Ottoman Empire with his tail tight between his legs. And he was like, yo, bro, I kind of fucked this whole Vienna thing up. And the uh, uh, caliph strung him up with a cord of silk until his fucking head came off. So think about that shit. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> at least it was like style. Like at least it wasn't just some horse rope or something. Like, yeah, I was gonna say like the Persian, <laughs> like Persians and like Arabs and Middle Eastern are always so creative yeah. with the way they it's kill all very people. very poetic. Yeah. yeah. Like what was it? I think it was St. Matthias was skinned alive oh. and then um... And then he, they took his skin, recreated him, and then dyed it purple. What? Yeah. <laughs> I've never even heard of that shit. Yeah, 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 because he was one of, because, you know, like, all the, he isn't talked about much in, like, Roman Catholicism, but, like, in Eastern Orthodox and everything, he's a big saint over there. And, like, um, so he, he went that way. Like, he went he, he went after, like, um, the Persians and all them, and, like, that's how he died. Which also showing that Catholics have a sense of humor, St. Matthias, uh, patron saint of Tanner's. Nice. <laughs> and also the patron saint of Kool-Aid mustaches. Because he's died purple. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay. I, I got what you're going that's, that's an aggressive Kool-Aid mustache. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, that's, like, uh, yeah. that's that's pretty, yeah. Uh, but um, Really fun rabbit hole to fall asleep to is going down, like, the, just wiki-walking all the way down through, like, the ancient, like, methods of torture and execution What's pages. your favorite one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I There's think so it's... many. You're so delighted by that question. I love it. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's such a standard, but crucifixion's fucked up. Yeah. My, probably the one that's kept me up at night before is the brazen bull. Yes, I was thinking about you that one, too. One that one's rough. This yeah, one's, it's fucked up. I, I haven't read through all this shit in a long time. They made this but... gigantic hollow brass bowl, and in its, like, where its mouth is, they built, like, flutes. Yeah. So, like, when air escapes, it sounds like people, like, like music playing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they would put a guy inside the bowl, lock him in there, and then wheel the bowl over a fire. Yeah. And Dude, so the that's just, awesome. <laughs> That's one of those things where, like, you really want to be dead long before you actually die. Well, the fucked up thing is the first guy that got put into it was the guy that made it. The guy that, the, the king, whichever king it was, commissioned this guy to make this bowl. And he's like, alright, now put your money where your mouth is. Let's see how this thing works. And locked him in there and fucking fried his ass. I also think... <laughs> what if it had been broken? What if it needed repaired? I think also with that with the bowl, it was execution wasn't always the thing. It was sometimes it was punishment. So like they would just they would heat you up, cool you off. Oh my god. Heat you up, cool you off for like days. It's like a are you guys old enough to remember the make DLTs? You gotta keep the hot side hot and the cool side oh, cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those. <laughs> I vaguely remember those, but yeah. But yeah, like they would like the bra- like the, the brazen bro the yeah. And um sometimes it was music, other times also the flutes, because they had different ones. Uh the flutes would make it sound like it's a bowl like, uh, like Oh yeah, mooing. I'm sure that's probably the probably the more Yeah, so like more if, more sense So flutes. people are screaming so you know, ne- because because of the way the bowl is constructed, you never hear the person screaming, you just hear mooing. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It's fucked up. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that, that's that would probably be the worst <laughs> of, of ancient torture methods that I'm aware of. I, that would probably. Be well, the worst. there's also I think it's the Chinese or Japanese the thousand cuts, dying by a thousand cuts. Like they literally just cut you a thousand times, and that's how you die. Like you'll die. Like it doesn't sound bad until it actually happens, and that's how you die. It's just like the end of Last House on the Left. I haven't seen that. Oh, it's a chainsaw fight. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> chainsaw fight. Have you, ever, have you seen the new Nerf guns? Because they have, like, a zombie line that comes with, like, chainsaw guns. No. Yeah. 
It shoots chainsaws? No, it has oh. a spin. It shoots darts, okay. but it also has another trigger underneath that Forest spins a chainsaw. foam chainsaw. Uh, the old Geigen. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. They also have another line that's based on. Are you familiar with the uh, game Borderlands at all? Um, I know, like, the guy on the cover with the. Yeah, the, the mask. psycho. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, like, the thing about Borderlands is, like, really weird, fucked up weapons. Okay. So, like, they have a line called Doomlands, which is based off of, like, pretty much based off of Borderlands, but they're Nerf guns. So they're weird, yeah. big, fucked up. Like, they have but, like, one. Even, like, the packaging. Like, I saw the packaging and I didn't see, like, the gun or the name of the line or anything. I just saw the packaging and went, that is some Borderlands aesthetic. And then I saw that it was called Doomlands. And then he's like, and those are Borderlands guns. Yeah, because the one gun that we saw was it looked like a um, crossbow, but in, like the the parts of the crossbow were just filled with darts that would just filter into the middle of the gun. Okay. Like that's how it shoot. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there, it's like a V eight kind of. Kind of. And the bolts would be gravity, f or the bolts would be yeah. gravity fed in. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, they've gotten real. Like, we, we were just a target, and we went, like, we walked down the nerf aisle for, like, the first time ever, and I'm like, wow, this has gotten intense. I used to do a, a one-page uh, comic for a magazine, and the magazine's gone now any days, but my comic was called The Whiskey Rebellion, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like, it, there was no story with it or whatever, it was basically just, like, a joke, like, I'd jam a joke into a couple frames of comic, and, um... <laughs> Uh, my favorite one was uh, a cannon where they would put a cat in water and then seal it up in this like tube and shoot the cannon, like shoot it over like enemy lines. <laughs> and it would like, sh like it would break open and like these fucking pissed off cats would come out and like skin people. You know, like they'd be like, a t this is really the most effective weapon. Like a pissed off cat will yeah. fuck your world up. Yeah, because I mean, you th they'll fuck you up and then there's also the. Uh... The chant. Maybe I should wait. Maybe we should wait. I'm broken now. It's okay. <laughs> Keep going without me. I mean, there's also the chance that like they could also develop a uh, cat scratch fever too. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. When they shoot it, it's that riff. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, have you have you listened to Hamilton at all? By any chance? Uh, uh. Okay. I was just curious. Like, do you know what it's about? Or have you heard anything it's about, about Alexander Hamilton? Yes. Yeah, no, I don't really know. Okay, it's a hip hop opera okay. um, about <laughs> Alexander Hamilton. Right. Yeah, I know. Like, I'll pitch it to people when I'm just like, yes, I know. Right. It, it sounds stupid. <laughs> I know. But it's um, amazing. It's, it sounds amazing. It's amazing. It is. It's amazing. Have you, you haven't listened to it? I have listened to it, um, but I did see uh, Lin Manuel Miranda on, on WTF. Uh, no, on, on Drunk, uh, History. Drunk History. Oh, yeah, he was. That was good. Yeah, with Ali Shawkat yeah. as Alexander Hamilton. Yeah, and like in the middle, and like, uh, and then Aubrey Plaza's Aaron Burr, which was hilarious. And, uh, um, from the middle. Do they of like it, do like a rap battle instead of they, like a duel? Um, no, they do the duel, but there's, um, there's two rap battles during because like the first act is Alexander Hamilton coming to America and the Revolutionary War. The second act is his public service as like Secretary of um, the Treasury. The treasury, yeah. And um, in the second act, there's rap battles that are cabinet battles with uh, with Thomas Jefferson, which are pretty awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. His his description like in Drunk History is uh. And he's like, so uh, Aaron Burr was running against Thomas Jefferson, and they were tied. Electorate was tied. And they're like, what do you think? And he's like, listen, I don't know anything about Thomas Jefferson, but Aaron Burr sucks, dude. <laughs> well, in the in the musical, the way he says it is, um, what is it Jefferson has v uh, is it views? Or? Yeah, yeah. Jefferson like has views. Burr has none. And that's because, like, you know, he and Jefferson fucking hated each other. So, like, everybody thought that, like, oh, he's going to go Burr. It's going to be cool. And he's like, nah. Yeah. The, uh, I need to check it out, though, because I'm a big fan of fake rap music. Like, um, Epic Rap Battles of History. Huge fan. I wouldn't call it, like, necessarily fake but it is kind of in that tone. Like, it's it's fairly historically accurate. Yeah. Um, it's like, really... it definitely comes... Like, you can tell that, like, Lin-Manuel Miranda has, like, a deep love of hip-hop. Yeah. So, like, it comes from a sincere place in terms of that. It also has, like, one of the songs called Guns and Ships is the fastest... <laughs> it's the fastest um, song in Broadway history. Okay. Yeah, it's so. super fast. So, so, is it on iTunes? I guess yes. iTunes? Yeah. Uh, do you have Apple Music? 
Um, no. Okay. Well, I was going to say you could just download it for free, but it is on iTunes. Like, it's pretty much the end, because it's, like, an opera, so right. it's it's the same thing. Because, like, Lin-Manuel Miranda talked about how, like, he never saw shows as a kid. He just listened to uh, cast albums, so right, he right. wanted to do that for people, too. So, like, you can just listen to the entire thing. Yeah. No, I didn't know a whole lot about, you know, the Mike Pence thing that was just in the news. Yeah. And then, like, um... Uh, Kristen Ross is a big fan of it. I knew, I know that, but mm -hmm. that's really, that's really it. No, I would check it out. It's like, I'm not a huge hip hop fan and I was just like, no, I dig this. This is, this is, it's catchy. It's, it's a little, it's all over the place. Like there's R&B. It's, it's a lot of, um, American music. What a weird smash up idea. Yeah. What a weird. Yeah. Well, if you listen to WTF with Lin Manuel, he goes into explaining because, like, what happened, like, the super short version is that he wanted just a big book to read on vacation. And he found, like, this biography of Alexander Hamilton. He's like, I'm going to read this. And he started reading it. And, like, he goes into the, um, he goes into the podcast a lot better about, like, he started hearing, hit, like, seeing hip-hop in the story. And, like, he contacted the guy who made the biography, and his reaction is like, really? Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, the first time he did anything with Hamilton, like, the first time he did anything publicly was at, like, a White House event. And, like, apparently how he uh, uh, opened it, he's like, I'm, I'm going to do a song about someone who personifies hip-hop, Alexander Hamilton. Right. So, like... <laughs> But yeah, no, it, it's it's definitely worth it. I well, would say a lot of those guys back in that day, they were fucking gangsters with each other. Yeah, like, when you look at the um, Thomas Jefferson and Adams, they're like their campaigns against each other. Yeah, they were brutal. Like, and they were like, friends. Yeah, they, they were like, <laughs> no, you guys don't know. Hey, you don't know this report newspaper reporter, but Thomas Jefferson's a fucking hermaphrodite. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, all right. They wrote it down. They published that shit. Like, it was just cr it was crazy. Sense. Yeah. Yeah, that was, um, yeah, because, like, Hamilton would, he was, he wrote under pseudonyms, like, all the fucking time. And, like, he would just, you know, uh, like, because at one point, the only Federalists that were in power were Hamilton and John Adams. And then after Adams fired him, he just, like, wrote, like, this ridiculously <laughs> long, like, editorial under a pseudonym that everyone knew was him. <laughs> just, like, calling him a fat fuck and That's all this. It's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. yeah. That's something I need to check out. Yeah, I mean, it's on Apple. Just I download it on Apple that. Music. I did uh, <clears throat> just start watching... Uh, Oliver Stone's uh, docu series, The Untold Story of the United States. Mm -hmm. So that's so far so good. I'm when it started to get into more modern times, I was like, I think Oliver Stone, because like Oliver Stone is a brilliant filmmaker, but a lot of times I'm just like, his You're... history is a questionable. Yeah. Best. Like if you look through like the critiques of JFK, like yeah. the JFK movie, they're like, yeah, none of this shit. We don't know where any of this stuff is. Oh, came yeah, because the guy, I think it was Kevin Costner's character is an amalgamation of, like, four or five yeah. different human beings. Yeah, like, when whenever it was, like, World War II stuff, I was just like, he actually had, like, stuff to back it up, like, yeah. witnesses and everything, but, like, as it started to get into modern, I'm like, this is more your opinion, Oliver Stone, than it is actual <laughs> fact. And that mustache <laughs> she has, like, in the opening monologue, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. who are you, Magnum P.I.? Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, he was, like, talking about, like, he's not good at, like, he says things that are worthwhile, but he's not good at getting people on this. So, like, whenever they were in, um, at Comic-Con promoting Snowden, and, like, you know, obviously very important, all that kind of stuff, he went on a tirade about Pokemon Go. I'm like, this is not the right environment to go <laughs> off about Pokemon. What was he saying about it? Oh, that, like, you know, like, the government's tracking you, and yeah, you're dupes, right, right, and, like, right, right. he was just, it was, he was pretty much being didactic, yeah. and, like calling like pretty much calling everyone idiots and i'm like no this is not the right place to do this <laughs> go to an old folks home if you want to yeah, talk like that. exactly <laughs> like he's just not he's not coming up like cause... back in my day yeah exactly get off my lawn yes. I don't know, just and anything that is saying that the government is following you or watching you is like the last thing you need to say to my grandmother <laughs> Because, like, she already has her... Does like, your grandmother believe in chemtrails? Um, no. She she believes in conspiracy theories What about that, Pizzagate? No. She what? believes in conspiracy theories that are, uh, made up and not, like, popular and, like, widely known. Um, I th her, uh... Some examples were whenever... <laughs> he looked so pained. Okay. <laughs> During, okay. <laughs> 
that uh, Kenneth Lay, you know, the guy from Enron who, like, had a heart attack before he had to go on trial. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also Osama bin Laden, they were going, they were still looking for him. She thought, she knew, rather, she knew because she knows that they were <laughs> they were hiding out on the uh, Bush Ranch in Texas. Oh, also that they were uh, college roommates. Yeah. 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 So, so there's that. There's, uh... The only the, the 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 latest the latest one the latest one that I love is that uh, Asians are actually aliens because nobody else looks like that. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like like the like the like like ancient aliens like Asians came from ancient aliens like it was an ancient alien race that came down probably around the same time as the first as the first people came down. First people came down. You know you know what I mean. The the Asians just came down and like they just started being Asian. And because nobody else looks like that. Well, they are really good at math. I was like, I was like, I mean, well, they actually what? did. So chemtrails find... would be sane. Yeah, yeah. Chemtrails well, they be they actually did find. Um, I I can't remember. So like, this is second of second hand. But apparently, there is like a tribe of, um, people in on this remote island that they're looking into it and like their DNA does not have like, it's not the same as like the majority of the rest of the world. Like there's like missing links kind of thing in their DNA. So they're trying to figure that out. Okay. So what the fuck is Pizzagate? Okay. So oh, Pizzagate. Uh, I just done, I just got done doing extensive research for Pizzagate. The yeah. last Abercast was all about it. It makes me want to take a fucking shower. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm afraid now. So it doesn't sound as delightful as I. It's, it's no, not. It's, it's, it's very it poorly named. <laughs> yeah. It's got a very unfortunate, um, happy sounding name. So Pizzagate is um, started on 4chan. Um, of course, it's does. a it's what, a, like the best things do. Like the worst things do. <laughs> um. And it was it was based off of I don't know I'm not going to get the names right so like this is just like the general gist because I also don't want to go super into it, but um, the from the WikiLeaks they were able to get emails and apparently four channers extrapolated from these WikiLeaks that the heads of the Democratic Party have a pedophile ring in the basement of a DC pizza place called Cause uh, Co Comet Ping Pong. Uh, and that uh, they're hiding, you know, the, the, this this big pedophile ring. Um, Snopes, New York Times, and Fox News have all debunked it. Um, but there was a guy yesterday who went into Comic Ping Pong uh, with a gun doing self-investigation uh, about it. Apparently, Comic Ping Pong doesn't even have a fucking basement. So, like, there's no place for them to actually hold this. But, this yeah. Something something that I feel very passionately about, and everybody knows I feel very passionately about, but I can never, I don't say it enough, and I can never really stress it enough. Fuck 4chan. <laughs> I hate that, the, ugh, I fucking hate 4chan. I hate it so much. Like, it used to have potential, and then it just became this. Well, the, a lot of the, like, quote, evidence, unquote, yeah. of it is, um, they found they chased down the Instagram accounts of the yeah. people the people who own um, this ping pong place and the people that they're associated with and they have some creepy fucking pictures on their Instagram. Of course, they're all private now and no one can see them. Before Chan stole enough of them, and it's like weird things with like infants with like stacks of cash in their mouth. And, like, German baby, $1,200, please do not touch, like, sign next to, like, a fucking baby. Mm -hmm. And they got, like, it's all, like, crazy and it's weird. Obviously, I don't want to get into it right here. But, I mean, it's, like, if it was just, like, one or two pictures, it would be something. But, like, there's a lot of fucking weird shit going on mm -hmm. in there. And it's, like, the guy whose email they hacked was John Podesta. Yeah. And, like, if you, like, a few years ago, they let, uh, uh, there was, um, for... Uh, some newspaper in D.C., he let them into their house because they were like, oh, let's see what kind of art the elite has hanging up. And he's got, like, picture, like paintings, like, huge paintings of, like, mostly naked boys hanging up in his fucking bedroom. And that is just creepy enough for me anyways. Like, mm -hmm. it's a kid taped to, a, like, a fucking drained pool. It's got, like, tile. 
and it's like the kid doesn't look like he's having a good time and it's just a painting but why the fuck do you want that up in your fucking bedroom i don't i don't know i don't know mm-hmm. the answer to that so it's to I mean, take what you want out of it but there's some weird weird up uh, appears to be some weird shit going on with it mm-hmm. justin has had the best screaming internally face for like a while it's finally yeah. gone now that other people yeah. are looking no but... i mean it's it's gone because like <laughs> do it again faded. i can't <laughs> um, you know you know i can't emote with my face <laughs> yes you can if we give you a character you can emote um, you are screaming internally that, that, that was more of an internal gagging. I was going to say, it also looked like you farted, but... Yeah, I was like, ugh, that's, that's, that's pretty rough. I you, mean, like, yeah, you, you looked like you were just thing, like, dying. Like, so. That kind of thing is totally a thing that would happen on 4chan. Yeah. Like, like P- Pizzagate aside, like, there are, like, there's, there, there's a market for that kind of thing on 4chan. 4chan is just, like, the scourge of the internet. Like, they will regularly do raids on Tumblr where like they'll try to like they'll go out of their way to make the tagging system even more useless than it already is but then like they'll you know they'll just go and like flood like random tags with shit like child pornography just because and like they did like actually bully someone into kill like it bullied at least one person into killing themselves and like they were like bragging about it What's so that? yeah yeah it's uh it's pretty rough and then i was yeah 4chan is yeah, fuck 4chan. I was watching, uh, I had this phase, like, when I say I have this phase, I don't mean I'm done doing it altogether, but, like, I just <laughs> did it a lot. <laughs> but, like, now I've seen, like, now I'm starting to see the same video, so, like, now it's, like, I'm pretty tapped out, but I was on YouTube and just looking at, like, the worst stories from the deep web, you know, like, the worst fucked up mm. shit from the deep web, and a lot of it was from 4chan, it was, like, all these horrifying stories from 4chan, and, like... A lot of the videos I was watching were, like, some of the same ones. I'm like, all right, maybe it's time to do something else with my time. Now that I'm, like, re- you know, coming back to it. But there was uh, somebody before they sh- – before they uh, – um, before a school shooting. One, one of the school shootings. I mean, it, it's it's pretty terrible that I can, like, say, you know, a school shooting that happened. And it's and really it's, up it's, in the air. It's so hard to, like, pinpoint – but he was like, hey guys, what's up, 4chan? I am going to bring a gun and shoot everyone at my school. And they're like, totally, bro, you should do it. And then they're giving them, like, tips on the best way to do it. And there was one there was one post that was like, tell everybody to, uh, you know, that you're not going to shoot them if they all get in one corner, you know, you know, one, one corner all grouped together in the room. Tell them you're not going to shoot them if they do that. And then so they all get together and then just unload. Like, you are a terrible person. You are an irredeemable person. <laughs> so that's um, that that's that's what I meant. But yeah, fuck 4chan. <laughs> fuck 4chan. Essentially, for, like there, I'm I'm sure there are 4chan users that are like not great people, but like not terrible. I feel like any of those people have probably been chased off of 4chan. Like I know it wasn't always the scourge of the internet, just you know well, by terrible it people. Out like terrible it started like Reddit. Yeah, anonymous, but like. Right? What did it start off as anonymous? Anonym- no, anonymous, anonymous started on 4chan. I thought yeah. it was a subreddit. I thought anonymous started from Reddit. N- no, they started from 4chan. Okay. Yeah, I feel like anonymous predates Reddit. No, they did. No, no, no. I'm saying that like all the people that were chased off of 4chan went to Reddit. Is what I'm saying. Uh. Like yeah, yeah. Um, no, there's actually a documentary on Netflix called We Are Legion, which goes into the history of anonymous, yeah. which is pretty interesting. Did you see? Did you watch that deprogrammed? It's on Netflix. It's about, no. the, it's about this guy, like, in the 70s, who used to specialize in unbrainwashing people who have been Oh, yeah, he, like, cults. kidnapped them. He went to jail kidnap, for kidnapping them. Yeah, he would fucking just jump out with a bag and be like, you're with me now. And just, yeah, because like, <laughs> he was hired. He would be hired by the families of the cult members. He would kidnap them, and in some situations, he would fuck them up more than the cult did. So he went to jail for it. Ah. Um, they call it Black Lightning because yeah. he would shock people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's something else to watch, I guess. <laughs> like I said, the We Are Legion's it's good. It's a feel-good movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't watched D program, so I can't... Yeah. I know about it. I know this, the topic yeah. I have. I don't know. I, mean, I haven't like, watched I, it. I'm generally pretty, uh, pretty uh, happy, content person, but like I, I just really enjoy watching things and hearing about things that are like super fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Every once in a while, I'll be like, Bro. oh yeah, I'll, I'll bet you we can all just, I'll bet you we can all just get along, and then there would be no more hatred in the world. And then I'm like, no, that's not a thing. Bro. This is all bullshit. <laughs> I didn't really know where I was going with that. That 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 started. And I Couldn't don't know. tell. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's her job to bring the room down. Yeah. You've been doing a great job of it today. I know. It's just like it, it's like a day to day basis for me. Is it because we have a guest? No. Is it my fault? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. Oh. I was just saying he's he's showing off for the guest. Oh. That's what I'm saying. No, no. I, 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 would, I, I, I wouldn't know how to show off. Like I feel like. like <laughs> I just see Justin takes his shirt off. Check this shit out. Like, like, I wouldn't know how to, like, be a more extreme version of myself. Like, if I consciously, like, made the decision to try to do that, I don't know if I could do that. You drunk is a more extreme version of yourself. I'm actually, I'm I'm more, uh, I don't know. You just need another grilled cheese sandwich, buddy. You'd be all right. Uh, that was, that, that, that was, that was a, that was a moderately underwhelming grilled cheese sandwich I had today. Aww. From get go, it was it wasn't it wasn't bad. Do you guys ever go to this McDonald's down the street from you? Uh, every once in a while, yeah. There's this annoying kid who works the drive through there. Mm-hmm. And you like he goes through and you you're, you pull up to the thing and he's like, "Hi ho, welcome to Mc- <laughs> welcome to Mickey D's. What can oh, I get for wow. you, bro?" And you're just like, uh, he's just trying to make his day a little easier. I get yeah. well, That's you, what I would do. I yeah. pull up there and he's just like, "How's your day going?" And I'm like, "Great." And he's like, "No, you mean Mick great." <laughs> He's like, that, that is the totally like, thing I would do. He's like, it is. He's like uh, how do you like my enthusiasm? And I was like, you have enough enthusiasm for the both of us. And he's like, does my enthusiasm bug you? And I'm just like, can I have my receipt and go? Oh, Jesus Christ. I wouldn't say bug, frightened maybe, but not, maybe not bug. But fuck it, I don't, I don't even need the fries. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that you're asking me this means that you want a reaction yeah. out of this. Yeah. So. Well, you can tell the poor kid's probably just trying to speed his day up or something. Well, that I've been there like three times. I, I, would, just, I, I, would, I would probably do the same thing if I was... If I well, were McDonald's. that well, McDonald's people, sucks, like, The people though. like behind them, they're like trying to punch in and punch uh-huh. out and shit. They're all like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> yeah, they're, that, that, that McDonald's per- particularly sucks because they're constantly understaffed for some reason. Yeah. So, like, not fast food. <laughs> yeah, like it takes a long time and then usually like, you know, because we're not assholes, everybody else there is getting their attention because they're being dicks to them. And it's like we're like we're just kind of sitting back, like let the poor people work. Jesus Christ! But like I've seen so like just people are awful there. Well, I recommend going to the drive-through <laughs> in the evening shift and fucking seeing this guy. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're having a bad day, if you're down a little bit. You know. oh, he was like pat- patting my shoulder like, like I was down. Like I, I'm not, I'm not down. I'm not generally like in a in a, in a dark place or anything. I Justin, just, you're in a safe place. I think. <laughs> problem is that the mo- the longer we know each other the more we rub off on each other so like you are now making other people sad around you because you've known me too and that's long that's not even what i'm trying to do like like i i'm not sad i just think it's interesting to, to, to say things you know what happened one time i had a couple people over and i was doing one of my podcasts and i ran out of stools so i had to sit mm-hmm. in a chair that was super lower than everybody else and i you know my mic was all down here and i'm like below where i'm normally being yeah and i felt it get on top of me like i like i felt like psychological like dysfunction <laughs> uh-huh. is that possible maybe that's what's going on uh, i mean no i mean like, it, I was, like, it's I possible like, but i felt like i was at the baby podcaster's table and uh-huh. was, like up there oh yeah they go into that whenever they teach you about directing uh with uh, directing actors about um showing who's dominant and who's submissive so you, with blocking like specifically you would have put like if you want a character to be specifically if you want a specific character to be dominant, you usually put them up a little higher. Um, I'm not going to go into it right now because there's not I don't have the visuals. But if you've ever watched Vertigo, there's the scene in Vertigo where Jimmy Stewart's character gets the job. And if you watch the camera, because it's one shot. I think it's one nine-minute long shot. If you watch the way that Hitchcock uses his camera, it's slowly... It's He does it specifically so... Jimmy Stewart is in a power position when he comes in, but by the end of the scene, he's no longer in the power position. He's in the submissive position. Whoa, because he got a job? Uh, because, have you seen Vertigo? Uh, when I was a kid. Um, well, spoilers. Um, <laughs> I think it's from like 1965. I think you're... Uh, 1957. Okay. Um... I'm a Hitchcock so fan, spoiler. sorry. I just fucking Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I knew it came out after High Anxiety. That's, that was my... No, before. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah uh, before. after. Right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. You were right. Um, it came out before Psycho because Vertigo is part of the second movie in what uh, film critics call Hitchcock's voyeurism trilogy, which is... Uh, rear Window. Rear Window, Vertigo, and Psycho. Um, but no, in Vertigo, 
because he's getting the job, he finds out because the job, the per- guy who's giving him a job is setting him up oh, gotcha. so he can essentially, ta- so he, the guy can kill his wife. So is it like a multi-level, like, floor? Um, yeah, there's set? some parts there where, like, it, like, Jimmy Stewart comes in and he goes to the desk and then, like, the character who gives him the job gets up and then they kind of walk through the room. And then, like, you know, it just kind of keeps switching back and forth as the conversation goes along. Like, the camera reflects it. Yeah. Yeah. That that always cracks me up, like, when you watch, like, Tom Cruise movies. Mm -hmm. How they always make him taller than everyone. Yeah. in my mind's eye, there's just, like, a milk crate he's, like, standing on just out of frame. (laughs) The industry term is apple crate. Okay, I'm sorry. Or, like, like Robert Downey Jr., when you're supposed to believe that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow could fit in the same Iron Man suit that Robert Downey Jr. was just saying, because it would just cut her fucking legs off like he's yeah a um short guy. tropic thunder whenever they have their conversation about um the full retard part yeah um they actually had to dig a ditch for robert downey jr so him and ben stiller were like similar heights so like robert downey jr is actually walking in a ditch next to ben stiller so they're similar heights oh, they, didn't they do that in, like in lord of the rings oh they, they yeah do all kinds yeah. of tricks for that that's yeah. fun yeah, that's so, like the coolest ditch digger job you can have, though. Like, I'm digging these... a ditch for Iron Man. Yeah, that's a union job. Like, what do you do? I dig ditches. Oh, I'm sorry for a movie set. I get the for, best catering for Downey. alive. For what? For Downey. Bob. He's referred to as Bob. Bob. Interesting. That's yeah, weird. Robert Downey Jr. Uh, <laughs> all of his friends call him Bob. That's really. He's weird. not a Bob to me. No. He's not a Bob to anyone other than his friends, apparently. Yes. Wow. But even weirder if they called him Bobby. It's weird that, like, Robert and Bob are the same name sometimes to me. Yeah. Will and know. Bill also perplex me. Same with Richard and Dick. Yeah. I don't That's know a where, big one, yeah. I don't know where they got that shit. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I feel like I you know. can always tell somebody's, like, age. Like, whether they go by Bob or Rob or Bill or Will. Yeah, I can see that. I don't know. That's... It's, Something to think about, I guess. <laughs> on, on, on your own time, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, since we have John here, we also wanted to go into... Because it is the season. Um, this is the most holiday episode we probably have done in three years. Um, not really, but this will make it slightly more. Um, <laughs> slightly, slightly more. Um, but uh, since, you know, John does all of his research, he can also inform us a little bit about like the origins of Christmas, which are not... Really? Yeah, like, when people say to put the Christ in Christmas, like, that always kind of confuses me, because it was around (laughs) way before Christ was. Yeah, it was Saturnalia? Yeah, like, back in the Roman days, it was Saturnalia, which is funny, because it kind of goes into the comic book. Everything connects! (laughs) (laughs) But Saturnalia was this weird thing where um, they would have uh, the king of, like, whatever town or county, or I guess that'd be a count, what kingdom, um every year would be like he could do anything he wanted for a day which I don't know why that's different than being the king the other day <laughs> but like he could just it's be like to be the king. <laughs> he could just be like yo pick that girl up and run around the house three times or like whatever and they would just have to do it that's but, like a random example glad to know what you would do with the yeah. power <laughs> everyone would have much better cardio <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, well, as tyrants go, he's not that bad. <laughs> like, look at these quads. <laughs> You're expecting rape or murder. Like, no, just do some cardio. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, that's it, really. No, that's, that's, that's not so bad, then, I guess. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, but because, like, the land... Because the time of year where it's, like, everything is, like, dying and not really ready for another three or four months to, for springtime... The, the king was tied into, like, the livelihood of the land and the kingdom. So, like, after his one day of being, like, the, the big gun, like I said, I don't know why it's any different than being a king any other day. Yeah. But they would sacrifice him. So they would, you know, take him and, you know, put him in the bowl or what what the fuck ever they did to him to, to kill him. And that would promote um, the next in line to move up. You know, so you would have, like, all these people, like, vying, like, Macbethian, you know, people, like, trying to, like, take over the role of the king, because you just gotta wait for a year or two, it'll be your turn next. Um, <laughs> so, so, you, alright, so... Can he just be like, I'm gonna run away, that's what I'm gonna do with my Saturnalia well, no, right. So, eventually, so... one of these guys was like, alright, well, since I get to do anything I want for today, 
go find me a criminal. <laughs> and so they brought this crook up, and he was like, hey, you're king for the next two hours, and then once they kill you, I'll be king again. So he's so... <laughs> <laughs> So being king was like a temp job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a big thing around that time. Wow. Oh, yeah. Do you know where, um, like, Cincinnati gets its name? I do not. Well, te- okay. Technically, it's named after Washington because he called him the American Cincinnatus. And Cincinnatus was a, car- uh, a Roman um, guy. He became the first dictator of Rome. Uh, I can't remember who was attacking at the time, but um, he took over all of Roman legions and he saved Rome. And... After he saved Rome, he stepped away from his power. So it was a thing that was told to all Romans that, like, this is what a good Roman does. Be like Cincinnati. So they called uh, George Washington the American Cincinnati, and that's where Cincinnati comes from. Yeah. It's probably it's a lot easier to step away from your position if you get to, like, uh, still just do your thing afterwards and not be in a bowl of fire. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Well, like, I w- who would even want to be king at that point? Yeah, I, I find it interesting <laughs> it that it took them a chick situation. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But I also find it interesting that like it took a while before someone's like, "I found a legal loophole, everybody." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like, uh, yeah, fetch me that fuckface over there. He's gonna be king, fuckface for the next two, yeah. two hours. <laughs> fuckface the first. <laughs> yeah. Piss boy. Piss boy. <laughs> um. Uh, so eventually that turned into it, cause that kind of, what's that dude did it, it kind of like delegitimized the whole thing. So instead of like having one King, you would have a King of the house. So, and that turned into, you know, where the King of the house could be like, you grab that flautist and run around the house three times or whatever. Um, and then that stopped the, the rampant bloodshed. Like obviously <laughs> not sacrificing all the Kings of the houses and all the kingdoms. So it became actually, like, the hallmark of it for a long time was role reversal. Like, the master of the house would serve the slaves dinner or whatever. And, like, everyone's role was just kind of jostled. And think about that. How fucking great that guy's day was. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Slave the rest of the year and then one day a year. Right. I get to tell that motherfucker what to do, you know. <laughs> then you still have to go into work the next yeah, day. You still, yeah, everything gets flipped like, back uh, eventually. <laughs> so, uh, now you remember telling me to fuck myself. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, slavery is slavery was interesting in Rome, like the way it was like set up and everything, like because like they had a, like a whole class of like freedmen and like all that kind of stuff. Like, not gonna get into it now, but like the way that slavery was used and the way that it was like politically and culturally in Rome was real interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Really, uh, I just know about it from watching Gladiator, the Russell Crowe movie. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> well, they um they recently did a show on Netflix called Rome. It was just called Rome, and like the first season, I guess they're gonna continue. To, uh, imagine the History Channel, but with blood and boobs. Oh, great! Um, yeah. and it was done. It was they just did Commodus. Like the whole first season is about Commodus's rise and fall, and it's it was actually really interesting because they did it in narrative slash documentary style. So like, so they'd stop and have like an ap- academic talk yeah. about it for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was real interesting. It was real cool. Like I would, I highly recommend watching it if you have a chance to. But yeah, one of the other cool things about Christmas is like the Yule, <laughs> like the the Yule log, mm-hmm. and it's like really just a giant metaphor for a penis. Yep. Thank you. Pagan. <laughs> Thank God. You know, I, so it's not just me. You're right. No. no. <laughs> so it's like what they would do is they'd fall this tree and they had to keep it burning for 12 days straight. And it's all about like uh, uh, promoting, you know, the springtime, like hurrying up the springtime or whatever. And Yule actually means wheel, which mm-hmm. I thought that this was super interesting because what they did is at the 12th day, they would capture a flame off the yule log and it'd be like some poor fucker's job to keep that flame lit until the next year oh and then they would use that flame to light the log for that for that 12 day for that 12 day period Fuck. so it's like just imagine like you know some guy is just sitting there in a room with this feeding this little tiny fire <laughs> <laughs> That's a bunch. they use that a little bit in catholicism too because like ash wednesday the ashes from Ash Wednesday are from the palms from Palm Sunday from the previous year. Right. Hmm. That's cool. Nah, I wouldn't say cool. Well, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. I always forget it's Ash Wednesday. And yeah, I'm always I do too. the poor guy that's like, hey, you got a little uh, 
<laughs> Thanks, Dick. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the same thing with like the Christmas trees is like a, a like a phallic symbol is weird. Like if you think about it, like I got a giant dick in my living room that I put tinsel on. I got a giant dick in my living room. I call my brother-in-law. Oh. Hey. <laughs> You're like, what is this? Like Studio Fifty Four? Oh, it's fucking Christmas time, man! It's, everyone's worshiping dicks. I don't know. Worshiping <laughs> dicks. That was just like the pagan thing, though. Is like worship dicks and worship vaginas. Yeah, and it's like that's where like rabbit, like Easter rabbits and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. Those are like the stuff. best parts, though. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, think about it. Like, think about like what other part on your on your anatomy. No, I know, but he was talking about rabbits, so I wasn't sure what you were referring to as the best part. That's why. Well, I mean, I'm, rabbits the feet. Lot, rabbits do a lot of fucking. Right. What? <laughs> <laughs> we're still we're still on on. Look, on I, penis you just looked at me and said, "Fuck, fuck him." I'm like, "Who? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't know." I said, rabbits, rabbits do a lot of fucking. Oh, all right, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Like, I'm, I, like, I thought we were on the same, still kind of having the same conversation. No, I'm talking about worshiping a giant dick in my living room. <laughs> and then he said rabbits, and I'm like, okay, dick, rabbits, I fucking, gotcha. like, that's, that's where I thought we were I going. Like you did the hand gesture. Yeah. Just in case any of yeah. us were confused. I'm yeah. oh, sorry for dropping the ball, buddy. I apologize. It's okay. All right. It's okay. <laughs> okay all right. All we'll, right. We'll get through this together. <laughs> I just have this image of you waking up and that's what you say every morning. <laughs> Look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. I feel you, buddy. No, it's all good. <laughs> I think everyone's called Justin Buddy more tonight than we have like in the last like six years. I don't know. Is it my fault? Or are you blaming me? No, yeah. not at all. Not at all. <laughs> it, just, it just happened. It yeah, just, just, it just uh, it just had. I just it's an observation. Just, just I usually just go bro. So bro, I like the bro. bros too, right? Bro, I mean, bro I don't him. like the bros. <laughs> I'm just myself even deeper. Uh, another, like one last cool thing about like Christmas or whatever is the amount of deities that have like all the shared characteristics, like born on the twenty fifth. Mm-hmm. You know, these three kings fucking follow him around wherever he goes, and he does all these uh, miracles. Um, Just off the top of my head, uh, Horus was like that, and Horus was actually from Immaculate Conception, we know, because uh, Set ripped Osiris's body apart, and um, they couldn't find his dick, so they had to build a gold dick for him, and she humped that. I also think that it would. I think Egyptians also believe that the world was created from masturbation. Probably. I think it was. The, I, I, can't, I created I, a lot of worlds out there. <laughs> I think it's Ra was like. I think it was Ra was just like jerking off one day and he yeah. let his semen hit the ground and that's how civilization was. He was created. like, oh shit. Yeah. Well, let's oh. not do that again. Yeah. <laughs> right? These guys are really going to fuck this place up. Yeah, most creation myths start with sex or end with sex or something would do with sex. Well, rightly so. I yeah. mean, you're encapsulating that story or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, another one was Dionysus, who had the exact same thing. And he was famous for turning water into wine, which, you know, Jesus also did in his day. Um, so I think there's like up to, you, you'll find lists or whatever. Of, like up to 25 you know deities that they can link with these exact same such like, a convenient things. number yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure you can find 33 of them which would yeah. be a little bit <laughs> so scary yeah. <laughs> you ever notice how all the numbers on the price tags end in nines it's eerie no that's uh, I was watching uh, not that I was like a particular super fan of it but I was watching Religious with Bill Maher okay and that was he's just a dick for yeah. that <laughs> he, like he he he, t- he could have done it so much better oh yeah like he well could've... he tried to be antagonistic like that was yeah. the point of it right yeah. yeah yeah like he was like he would like there was people that like probably deserve to be fucked with i'm like okay do your thing like on those people <laughs> and then there's like west poor... baptist church fuck yeah. It yeah and then there's like this poor guy who's like just super religious who owns a store who sells religious trinkets and he's like you're bullshit he's like no, I just believe in God because one time somebody said, if you believe in God, then ask him to make it rain. And I stuck my hand out of the, of the window and it rained. It's, it's like, that's, like, that's all this guy needed. Like, he wasn't hurting anybody. <laughs> you know what he should have said? He was said? so sad. He, he was so like, he was so like, you know, well, I just, that's, uh, you, you, 
you, you, you know, up your nose with a rubber hose, buddy. Well, after he said all that, he should have looked at him and been like, yeah, well, fuck your hair plugs. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, like, he just destroyed this guy. I'm like, that was uncalled for. But part of it was, he was listing, it was a whole list, it was like a scroll, scrolling list of of deities with, you know, with, with the same, oh, with these same characters. born of the 25th, born yeah, yeah, yeah. of a virgin, there were three wise men, right, and, right. and a camel. <laughs> camel was important. Yeah. He's like, Brian, how, how, how should he, how, how bad would you feel if you were Brian, born next to Jesus? Yeah, well, you gotta remember. Yeah, so, going forward, <laughs> like, what you gotta do is when someone says, like, put the Christ back in Christmas, you could be like, yo, bro. Put the Saturn back in Saturnalia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, it's pretty much similar. Like, I feel like Christmas is the, the, was the PR marketing part of, the biggest PR marketing part of the Catholic Church. Well, I mean, just think about, like, all the, the, we just cited, like, a bunch of deities that share all those same things, so it was easy to use that to, like, co-opt into mm-hmm. your, oh, like, your guy was born on 25th? Fuck, man, my guy was also born on the 25th. <laughs> it's like you can kind of use that same psychological operation on just about anywhere you go because they're all, they all get these um, stories from watching uh, the astro theology, uh, the, all the constellations moving mm-hmm. across the sky, doing all these same things is where everyone's getting the, getting these ideas from. So well, like, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, isn't that, like, why in the lore as we know it, Jesus was born on the 25th? Because it was just straight up co-opted? Like, yeah. Because, like, in reality, he would have been born in, like, the spring or the fall? Yeah, all theo- pretty much every theology scholar says, like, yeah, October, it was... It was oh, no, um, they said it was April. April. Um, because uh, the lambs, if you're going to go by the, the nativity story, lambs were out in the field, and that would be an April thing. I gotcha, I gotcha. Um... But, you know, you can't really have... It'd be very confusing for children if you had the death and the birth. Some years the death comes before the birth and all that kind of stuff. It was like, all... it's not confusing enough already? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it gets even more... Oh, it's even more... Is anyone here familiar with the Catholic calendar? No. Oh, that shit's fucking... And also, that they kind of co-opted that, too, because the Catholic calendar's on a wheel. Okay. Just like um, if you... If uh, Wiccan... Like neo paganists, they they put their calendar on a wheel. Also, so does it start and end the different spots. Or um, it's oh, fuck if I remember because I never fucking remembered it because it didn't make any fucking sense to me. Um, I believe the year starts with Advent. Okay. And then and then yeah, I think it be- it ends with a- it starts with Advent and then the year ends with uh the feast the feast of Christ the King, which is the week before Advent. So then, like, you have, because then there's also certain times, because you have Advent, and then Christmas is actually a 16-day festival, uh, and then after, I can't remember what happens after that, then there's Lent, then Easter, and then pretty much from Easter until the Christ the King, it's ordinary time. Ordinary time. Yeah, that's what they call it. boring shit. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, because, like, if you go to a Catholic Mass, they're like, it's the fifth. It's the fifth week in ordinary time. That like, always bothered me. Yeah. So bad. Like this is yeah, this is this is the fifth week in ordinary time. Like, what, yeah, I feel like, like I've heard that like a beforehand? handful of like Catholic things I've gone to just because it was there. Yeah, I don't know. My like I, I grew up Catholic going to C C D and like what once I got to about like, I don't know, third or fourth grade, uh, it's it, it's the same thing every year. Yep. You you learn the same stories, the same stuff every year, and I'd be like, "What? That doesn't make sense. Like, how come this thing isn't this way? Oh, just because because we're Catholic." Yeah, because there was a what? lot of times, like, well, once <laughs> after second grade, because your big sacraments, whenever you're, it goes, you know, baptism, confirmation, reconciliation, communion. confirmation, communion, no, then com- reconciliation, communion, confirmation. Mm-hmm. They all sound like Star Trek subtitles. No, I was I said confession <laughs> slash reconciliation. Like uh, there's yeah, and then, and then communion, yeah. and then yeah. con- and then confirmation. confirmation yeah, yeah, later. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, are you also not Catholic? I'm not alone this time. No, but what I was, I was born and raised Southern Baptist, so so much worse. My, yeah, my shit gets a little bit more angry in places. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, thought, I was raised evangelical, so I feel you. Um, but what I was saying is like after you're sick, because you get most of your sacraments confirmation. Uh, um, 
communion and um or eucharist and reconciliation are both in second grade essentially so from second grade until eighth grade you're just fucking stalling because confirmation doesn't come until eighth grade so like that's the ordinary time for us it was ninth grade because the bishop only came to our church every other year so some people got to in eighth grade and other people got to do it in ninth grade who who is who is who confirmed you um do you remember his name was it uh, zubik no it wasn't zubik it was uh bishop uh guy man guy man i want to be yeah. confirmed by father guido sarducci <laughs> um he's on saturday Night live yeah um, <laughs> I, I i i i knew the reference I, I didn't know if anyone else would but i knew the reference um he's in casper actually um He's, oh, so he, is Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, as yeah. the ghost so yeah. But yeah, no, um... Yeah, actually, I found out recently that your confirmation... Because, like, I always thought that, like, your confirmation name got written down somewhere. No. It doesn't. You can change it. I didn't know what I wanted my confirmation name to be, so I was like, I'll just use my middle name. And then they're like, <laughs> how come? So you're Justin Thomas Thomas? I'm J- Justin. <laughs> well, your first and full name would be so you could be JTT Papillardo. Could be. What's the what's like the traditional thing? Like you uh, choose a biblical name. You cho- like you have to like choose the name of a saint because they did a thing that you like. Okay. And you can't say oh he was a nice guy. So you couldn't just be like uh, Han Solo. No. no. <laughs> um, though I did find a way because I I recently changed my confirmation name and I found a way around it. But what they wanted you to do. Um, it worked out. Um, they want you to use your baptismal name typically, so I'd be Nicholas John Nicholas. No, um, I wasn't going to do that. But I actually recently changed it because I found out you can. So it, my full name would is technically Nicholas John Constantine Kazina. Okay. Because I found the loophole because Constantine was yeah, yeah. the emperor. So because like it's either a saint. Um, you can also get a loved one if okay. like some because I had someone who's confirmed. Uh, his conf- confirmation name was David, and that was like his little brother who died. Um, or if you can find a way to justify it, you can also, so. so which, are you the Keanu Reeves, John Constantine, or <laughs> the, the British one? The, CW? <laughs> the, the British one, I'm Hellblazer, if you will. Yeah, um, at least he knows Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the confirmation I was very excited about, um, and then my mother duped me into picking a name that I actually didn't want, because my original confirmation name was Michael fucking boring <laughs> you have to convince myself it wasn't boring it was boring i was like they were like whenever i was going to get confirmed and then the the bishop was like and what's your confirmation name i was like uh, thomas <laughs> she asked him a question You're like is it i don't know what is it? and yeah like i'm just glad that he didn't ask like why is this your confirmation name because I was my cousin's sponsor whenever he got confir- con- confirmated. Confirmed. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, it's, and he was um, uh, Sebastian, I think. Oh, do you know how St. Sebastian died? <laughs> Narrows, I want bro. to now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was tied to a church because he, I think it was a Roman general, he converted and married this Roman general's daughter. Then whenever the Roman general found out, they tied him to a tree and ter- uh, turned him into target practice. Yeah. Yeah, so. Nice. And he was like, Catholic- uh, Catholicism is pretty metal. Did they ask him why? Yes, and I, th- I think it was Sebastian because he was the uh, saint of athletics. Oh. Like, can you pick a more Which, boring again, fucking name? I was hoping you were going to be 18 in life, bro. Skid row. <laughs> <laughs> But also, again, if like since he, he was more of an Aerosmith and Bon Jovi, oh, kind of right, guy. <laughs> but also, again, with the whole sense of humor, you have Saint Sebastian who was shot with arrows, and he's the patron saint of athletics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this ulcer on my tongue is killing me. It's making it like I difficult. I'm a big talk. fan of Saint Gertrude. I don't, know, of cats. I, I don't know anything about Catholicism, but I know I like her. I believe her feast day is all... No, that's never... I thought her feast day was the same day as St. Patrick's, but I don't think it is. Um, yeah, she's the patron saint. There's a patron saint of TV, television. I just need St. Clair, I think it is. I just need the cats. There's also a saint... I don't. I can't remember who it is, but there's a saint uh, who's a patron of a, a, a evocation of, against vampires. <laughs> But sinker, she's nice. Like <laughs> All your cats are belong to me. <sighs> well, yeah, so, um, 
John, you got any plugs? We can wrap it up. Uh, We've been talking for a while, and the, the conversation kind of went. Eh. I got I got plugs like Bill Maher, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Very good way to wrap it around. <laughs> Try to get some energy back in this thing. Um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you can just go to uh, stigmatastudios.com and find all all my stuff there, all my links there. You can find my two podcasts there as well. Uh, the Abercast, which I deal with occult, paranormal conspiracy nonsensical things in uh, red horse radio um you if you uh, don't want to go there you can just go to amazon you can find the vision jihad and the ages right there so yeah that's all i got i'm pretty easy to find mm-hmm. yeah cool uh thought i had something i, I don't have, have... I, I i have a one last question yes no. uh big gear tupac big gear tupac yeah it's harder than you think it is, isn't it? Uh, no, I don't know anything from any of them. Neither I Nas. I would say Tupac just because I had to listen to a drunk guy ramble about a conspiracy theory that he's still alive somewhere based on the tennis shoes he wore in his last music video. That is so, a thing. I heard that like what? I, okay. years ago. Why isn't it just simply he's still alive because he released more dead than he did alive? Like, I, that, I'm, sure like that, I'm sure that fit into this guy's worldview, but also it was the key to it was the fucking it, tennis it shoes. It was the Jordan. Yeah, he wore. He was. I don't know. It was, actually, it was like, the, it was like the, the '96 Jordans, and he got died in '94. I something. actually got stuck on a bus one time with a drunk guy who also tried to tell me that Kurt Cobain was the voice of my generation, and I didn't agree with him either. I <laughs> met. I met a guy outside of a Wallflowers concert. Whenever the Wallflowers were at um, Ultra Bar, and he said that uh, he was like uh, supposedly like super tight with uh, Perry Farrell. Because he brought him his favorite kind of tequila to a show one time. And also that because he was friends with Perry Farrell, he would hang out at Perry Farrell style parties. Mm-hmm. And met and met uh, Jim Morrison, who is like alive and changed his name. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, and he's like, he was telling me he's thinking about, you know, coming back he's, into the public yeah. eye. You know, yeah. so well, watch out for this guy. Yeah. This is going to be his name now. Yeah. It's like, totally, dude. What's his name? I can't remember. It, it, it was something it's so simple. It's Morris Jimson. Yeah. <laughs> so Perry Farrell will become relevant again and then just be like, dude, my friend here. I want to know what a Perry Farrell style party yeah, is. Yeah, same. I'm like, is it, it's kind of like Christmas. Everyone just sits around worshiping big dicks. And <laughs> yeah. It seems legit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was uninvited to a Perry Farrell, Perry Farrell style party because I was caught stealing when I was five. Uh, I uh, can trust me again. My um, my first, my first publisher. I tried so hard to cram that in there. My first publisher. That's what he said. Yes. My first publisher actually published books from the fake dead Jim Morrison, who would now. He was a private detective in Los Angeles or Las Vegas or something like that, you know, working mob cases. So, I mean, there's that as well. As you do. Yeah. <laughs> just like just like Steven Seagal. Exactly. They're both, I can just imagine both big and fat running around solving crimes like that. I love that Steven Seagal's a cop. <laughs> and people take him seriously. Wait, he's a legit cop now? Yeah, like in New Orleans. He, like got, a, he got elected sheriff. There's a whole, uh, there's, yeah. a, there's a whole, there's a whole, uh, Tom Segura a bit about it, and it's like he has a show, and he's like, so right now, if you were to go to New Orleans and get into a bar fight, there is a real world possibility that you'd be arrested by Steven Seagal. And then he's talking about, like, all the bullshit, like, he's like, just talks about all kinds of bullshit, right? How he changes his, he changes his voice for whatever yeah. racial demographic he's talking yeah, to. Yeah, he changes his greeting, like, <laughs> like he meets an Asian, like, if he talk, talks to an Asian person, he'll always bow, you know what I mean? And like, like, it's just like, and then he was talking about, like, you, you'll like hear a helicopter and be like, oh, a helicopter, that's uh, F1B28597. Skippy, skippy. <laughs> uh, I've been working on helicopters for like 50, 54 years. And the, the helicopter, they, they call that a skippy. <laughs> Why do they call it a skippy? Because the sound it makes it is like, skip, 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 skip. <laughs> Tom Segura is brilliant. I love Tom yeah, Segura. Really skip, 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 skip. Call that a skippy. <laughs> skip, 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 skip. <laughs> Well, on that note, that's a good place to stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's the perfect place to stop. Please, Justin, stop. Uh, 
Oh, stigmatastudios.com. Also, uh, check out uh, society-13.com. We got a bunch of great uh, podcasts over there. Uh, a bunch of my brothers in arms podcasters. And thank you, bros, for having me on. I mean, yes. I appreciate it. I always have fun when I come over here. I like you, bro. Oh, thanks, bro. Always and forever. We always enjoy well. having you on, John. Uh, so... Maybe next time you come on, you won't be so uh, so uh, professional whenever you... I think it's just like the first like, couple minutes. I just got to like feel everything out, and I think I loosen up just fine, right? Oh, no, you yeah. loosen up fine. It's just it's just so funny that it's like, that's so not you. I'm like, that's... <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is John Towers. I'll be here all week. <laughs> right on. So, um, on that note, I am Nick Kazina. Follow me on the Instagrams at Sinister Dreamus with no E in Sinister. I am Justin Papalardo. Catch me on the tweets or the Snapchats at Keys to Pappiness. That's Keys the number two. Pappiness like happiness, but with a P. Skip, 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 skip. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, I'm Juliana Hawk because Anders.tumblr.com. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the force with you. See you next week. Thank you, and may the force be with you. You have been listening to the Sinister Dreamcast Network. For more from Sinister Dream Productions, check out www.sinisterdream.com.